Hi there. Good morning, London. I'm Gavin Heyman, as we know, and I'm um, going to tell you how myself and my team at the Open Contracting Partnership are trying to open up trillions of dollars of government deals with companies worldwide. Now, if I press the right button, good. I spent a large portion of my adult life as a corruption hunter trying to track down dirty deals around the world. These were often secret sales of state assets by corrupt dictators at knockdown prices. I've never got anywhere near the heights or the haircuts of Bernstein and Woodward from all the President's men, but hopefully you sort of get the idea of what I was trying to do. And let's face it, public contracting and deal-making, unlike political scandals, are boring and complicated. And yet they're also vital. It's the bricks and mortar of public benefit where government money, taxpayers' money, by us, gets converted into the roads, the schools, the hospitals, the other assets that citizens really care about and notice when things go wrong. And furthermore, the amounts of money that's spent in it are absolutely mind-boggling. To give you some idea, the total spending, the best guess, on government contracting around the world each year is 9.5 trillion US dollars. If you were to take a dollar bill and stack them, that would take you all the way to the moon and back. That's a whopping 15% of global, do global domestic product. It's also the public activity that's most vulnerable to corruption and also just a massive inefficiency. So personally, after years of picking up the pieces when things had gone wrong, I became really interested in how we could actually make deal-making across government cleaner, better, more efficient and more transparent. And that's why I jumped at the opportunity to join the Open Contracting Partnership. It's a collaboration between governments, companies, civil society and technologists to open up all the dollars and deals around the world. At the heart of our approach is a public is a public data standard that actually describes the key bits of information and how to release them in an open source. It tells you about what, when, and how to release the information. And it links together the entire chain of government deal-making, from tenders and planning through to the contracts, and then, very importantly, their implementation and assessment. And it takes all the documents and the paper archives and the bits and pieces of paper flushing around government and shares them as open, structured data that allows you to really dig into the information, connects together the fragmented silos across government, allows data to be reused and reshared, and also attaches unique identifiers to that to allow you to do that. And we manage that as a global good, and we run a global help desk. I think you were hearing from Ben earlier on this morning, who's uh, one of the people there working with us, assisting publishers. We're working with about 10 governments around the world, including uh, the Mexican government, the Philippines, Vietnam, Zambia, Canada, and the UK and Ukraine. And we're also looking at how we open up public procurement and public contracting across cities, such as Mexico City and Detroit. Anyway, enough of theory. Let's get more into the practice as to how things are working on the ground. An example would be in Ukraine, where there's the Maidan revolution in the winter of 2013, and now the government's trying to work with businesses and civic technologies. It's used the open contracting data standards at, right at the heart of a new public contracting and tendering process called ProZoro. They named it ProZoro, A, because it means transparent in Ukrainian. Secondly, it sounds like Zorro. So there you go. Um, <laughs> the results so far have been pretty impressive. You can now see all government contracts related to public tendering and contracting openly and freely accessible online. In the first three months of running the system, the government's been saving approximately 10 to 20 percent on its tenders related to what it was previously spending through its budgets. And competition by businesses has increased measurably. And they're now scaling up ProZoro across the Ukrainian government's entire spending and deal-making process to replace the old Soviet system. Another example comes from Paraguay. And here the government's developed a series of visualizations just giving key procurement activities by year, by entities, by amount, and by department. So you can actually see what is going on in contracts, what the spending is, and what the results and delivery will be over time. Now, it's still early days for open contracting, um, and there's going to be a huge investment needed to help make users, be it civic technologists, be it companies, or be it government, take full advantage of the, the information. But we're hugely optimistic. And let me give you an example of impact. This is from Slovakia. Now, there was a series of Slovak uh, government scandals that led to a uh, popular protest to people out in the streets in relation to high-level corruption. As a result of that, Slovakia changed the law. It wasn't going to be an official government contract. It wasn't legal until it was made public. 
And the results of that have been amazing. Something like 8% of citizens have now actually looked at government contracts online. Examples of waste, fraud and abuse have come to light. Classic example being hospital scanners that were being sold by a shell company for twice the usual price by um, a government politician. Those have all been ended. Expensive um, government contracts on seafood, cognac and luxury cars have all been cancelled after they were picked up and published by the media. Perhaps the most interesting thing, though, is that business have been a key user's information. Businesses love to see what government contracts look like. They can predict what's coming up next, how to bid, and how to provide better and more innovative services to government. As a result of that, there's actually been an uptick in government, um, in public contracting, um, and the number of companies bidding for public contracts. It's actually doubled over time from about 1.6 per tender to about 3.7. So, if I can recap quickly at the end, open contracting can help save um, governments a fortune in time and money, um, it can also help create a better and fairer playing field for businesses. It can unlock public innovation. It can deter corruption and hopefully improve service delivery. We can all become a bit more like Bernstein and Woodward and actually dig into the data. Um, the minister's still in the room. Minister, I'd love to pitch to you that UK could do more on opening up its public contracting as well. So, <laughs> great, well said. So, at the end, I just want to say the future of contracting is open contracting. Thank you very much. Cheers.